Yeah, as we discussed in the evergreen forest, usually they occupy north part and north east part of the uh, continents. So similarly, we have the opposite directions like west and you know southwest part. So this southwest and west part of the continents usually you know the Mediterranean vegetation you observe. What is this Mediterranean vegetation? So the name coined because this Mediterranean vegetation you observe mostly in Mediterranean Sea in Europe where uh, you get the temperature and uh, it's too high, too hot and uh, low rainfall uh, and the, the vegetation is, you know, uh, it's like you don't find much uh, wildlife because the grass and uh, are not uh, the higher, uh, like it's maximum of, uh, you know, three to four meters. So this kind of uh, vegetation you usually find and are common in Africa Asia, Mediterranean Sea in Europe and South Australia. So usually we get citrus, figs, olives, grapes, uh, plants, mostly you know all soft uh, trees and also the plants we get in this kind of uh, vegetation. So this is about the Mediterranean vegetation. Apart from this we have another type of forest called coniferous forest and this coniferous forest usually uh, you uh, observe in the Himalayan uh, ranges, these coniferous forests are having also you know, hot uh, wood uh, trees and also soft wood trees. And this coniferous uh, forests are especially in the polar regions where you know they get the uh, snow and uh, this kind of climatic conditions. So similar to our uh, forest, we have uh, other type of uh, natural vegetation called grasslands. So again, these grasslands are uh, divided into the different types. For example, now we discuss with the first and the foremost grassland, like you know, tropical grassland. These tropical grasslands are found in the tropical uh, zone of the globe. That means either side of the equator, you get this tropical zone where you get the tropical grasslands so uh, for example uh, in africa we have a savanna grasslands where you get more zebras giraffes and uh, elephants and uh, you know uh, deer so all these animals are very common in these uh, grasslands where the grass uh, grows up to four meter uh, in height so uh, especially you uh, observe these grasslands and a tropical uh, areas called tropical grasslands. So we have the second type of grasslands. Also we call it stepper the temperature grasslands. Temperature grasslands are uh, also known as stepper which are uh, mainly you know uh, found in mid latitudinal regions of the globe. Mid latitudinal regions where the rainfall is uh, low to moderate and but uh, the grass height is short and having nutritious uh, uh, in type. So they're very you know well known and nutritious type. So usually uh, we get a wild buffaloes, bisons, uh, or these are the animals uh, commonly you found in these uh, grasslands. And uh, also we have the thorny bushes. These thorny bushes you commonly uh, get uh, in the dry deserts where there is almost uh, low rainfall, no air. So these pines will take the uh, water vapor from the atmosphere and feed the plant. So these uh, thorny bushes you get in the west margins of the continents where there is low uh, rainfall. And uh, usually uh, we uh, find in the the desert areas also in India we can see this. So thundra vegetation usually we get in the polar regions where again a low rainfall but in the polar regions uh, example North America, Europe and other parts uh, we get aware uh, the uh, mosses, lichens and very small shrubs are very common in this uh, part of uh, vegetation. So and the animals also found in this uh, tundra region having 
uh, fur and very thick uh, skin material, uh, very thick skin animals uh, like you know uh, having uh, uh, for foxes with fur uh, you get in this uh, regions and uh, animals we get uh, uh, accordingly the temperature and also the vegetation is also uh, the parameter which affect the, the adaptation because usually animals adapt uh, thick fur uh, in this tundra vegetation. So now uh, we understand about the human beings and you know the, the human society and the environment which is uh, you know uh, vice versa impacting both the human society and also the environment. So as you know the dominant species in the earth, uh, the dominant species having the life you know is human being is you know around BC 10,000, 10,000 uh, BC before Christ. So uh, human beings population was 40 lakhs whereas in 2010 the 50 crore it met a 50 crore population in the world so uh, so you can imagine the, the the growth of the population is increasing day by day and expecting in 2180 it going to be 100 crores of human uh, population so imagine the human population means every day the human needs food, shelter. So, but the space of the, the earth is the same. It's before uh, BC 10,000 and also in 2280, the space is the same, but the human population increasing day by day. So this population needs uh, uh, the forest and uh, needs water, aid. So everything is interlinked as we discussed but in due course if we pollute the the normal uh, phenomena then even you will experience global warming so the earth also cannot sustain the huge pressure of uh, the human uh, population growth and which is, which is indirectly requires more minerals and more uh, food material and more water so the human uh, society is having the more impact on the environment which we are living in. So, so an industrial revolution also made uh, the you know phenomena of uh, you know uh, trying to human beings are trying to make the best place to live in uh, in the Earth's uh, surface and indirectly, which uh, sometimes it is you know making the difficulty even for the environment. So, for example, pollution is uh, one of the, the major uh, uh, environmental crisis which we discuss on. So, the impact of industries and the wastage uh, you know, uh, of this industrial waste, we can call also pollutants and effluents. So, usually the main uh, fossil fuels like coal and petroleum, uh, as you know, uh, coal and petroleum again formed uh, by the decomposition and the bacteria of very, you know lakhs of lakhs of years ago the trees are decomposed and this bacteria has uh, made uh, this wood uh, and also coal and this uh, to uh, petrol so we uh, now use uh, this wood and petrol as you know our uh, for energy and we are utilizing for our cars buses trains and all and even for the industries and this is again converting into carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide. So this uh, coal and petroleum, once uh, you burn this fuel, it will uh, is going into the atmosphere in the form of gas, a very you know uh, harmful gases. And also uh, like you know if you get uh, the sulfuric and carbonic and nitric acids, so if they go in the form of you know, liquid vaporized uh, liquid form, and also if the rain, once if they touch with this kind of uh, harmful acids and uh, you know, gases, you get uh, acid rains, which is again, this acid rains will affect the human uh, uh, yeah, beings, uh, like you know, you get the skin diseases and all these things through these acid rains. And majorly these pollutants are, are making uh, this uh, form of acid rains. And uh, also this coal and petroleum usage is uh, burning of this coal and petroleum 
we get more pollutants in the atmosphere also the industries those who are getting you know uh, more and more now are throwing out the wastage in the rivers in the form of uh, some you know uh, like wastages this industries waste also will affect the fishes in turn again that may affect human beings so this kind of you know industries and effluents is affecting a lot in the biosphere is affecting the ethosphere and also the atmosphere so we get uh, like you know plants which are you know due to this uh, pollute pollutants they can't even grow and uh, even the rain uh, also will get affected with this pollutants so the dust is forming so so that is about the industries and uh, we have uh, the depletion of resources we are every day day by day we are using the uh, non renewable uh, resources uh, that means you can't even uh, get uh, it back for example if you uh, take the water okay it is again going in the other form again we get that water that cycle is there whereas once if you utilize coal and petrol that's it you can't even renew it and you can't even get back it so once if it is gone it's gone that means we have very few non renewable resources once if it is utilized so it is very difficult for our next generation so scientists are also you know uh, having a, a huge uh, discussion on this topic that uh, you know for children and for grandchildren this resources won't be exist if we use this energy that uh, like uh, now if we continue this kind of practice then it will uh, Uh, arise a lot of problems in our future so that's about our biosphere